Okay, let's look at a couple more complicated examples of the chain rule with trig. Uh, let's start with this. Now, in the last part one program, uh, I showed you how to do this using the chain rule of the argument. If you have one that looks like this, I think it'll help if you think of it like this, is the entire argument is in brackets. If you want to, you can go ahead and put it like that. So let's find the derivative of that. Now, before I go on, though, what I'm going to do, the last time we did it, we did it using the chain rule where we had 3 times this thing squared. Another good way of doing it, if you want to avoid the chain rule on the, on the argument, is just to raise that to the fourth power, and raise, or to the cubic power, and raise this to the cubic power. So this, I'm going to rewrite this as the sine of 4 cubed is 64, and this would be x to the 6. So that eliminates the chain rule step. So the derivative, the derivative of the sine is the cosine. There's the derivative of the outer part. Then rewrite the inner part, then times the derivative of what's on the inside. Well, 64 times 6 is 384. Then this would be x to the fifth, and you are done. So derivative of the outer part times the derivative of the inner part. There's just a little trick. Sometimes if you cube the argument, it'll save you from having to do it a second chain rule step. Let's take a look at a couple more. Okay, the only difference between these, this is the tangent and this is the tangent cubed. Let's take a look at what they look like. So y prime, the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. So this is going to become the secant squared of, that's the derivative of the outer part. Now rewrite the inner part, the original inner part, times the derivative of what's on the inside, which is 6x, and you are done. Now watch how it becomes a little bit more complicated if you cube the trig function. Now remember, the very first thing to do is to change it to this. Take this 3 right here and move it to the outside. So I'm going to make this be this thing cubed. So it will be the tangent of 3x squared, the entire thing cubed. Now if you do that, that will make it easier to picture what's on the inside and the outside. So the derivative would be, first of all, the derivative of the outer part, 3 times something squared. There's the derivative of the outer part. Rewrite the original inner part, then times the derivative of what's on the inside. Well, that will become the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. Rewrite the original inner part times the derivative of what's on the inside, 6x, and you're done. So again, here's an example where you've got the chain rule inside the chain rule. Uh, let's take a look at a couple more examples. Here's a cosecant and a cosecant to the fourth. So on this one, the derivative would be the derivative of the cosecant is the negative of the cosecant cotangent. And I would write it like that, and then we'll fill in the blanks later on. So that's the, outer, that's the derivative of the outer function. Then you rewrite the inner function, and actually do it twice, because the x shows up twice, times the derivative of what's on the inside. The derivative of 5x is 5, and you're done. Let's try this one. But again, I'm going to rewrite it first as something to the fourth power. So take this 4 and move it to the outside. That would be the cosecant of 5x. So now the derivative of this one. First of all, you've got something to the fourth power, so it'll be 4 times something cubed. Rewrite the inner part, which is the cosecant of 5 x, then times the derivative of what's on the inside. The derivative of the cosecant is the negative cosecant cotangent. And I'm going to write them and leave them blank for a moment. Then replace it with the original inner part. Then times 
the derivative of what's on the inside, which would be a 5, and you will be done. So there's the second that group. Uh, let's look at a couple more. Uh, let's look at the product rule. What you've got here is a first and a second. So first times the derivative of second, but they involve the chain rule. Let's try this. So y prime would be the original first times the derivative of the second, and I'm going to go ahead and stick this one in brackets. So the derivative of the second, the derivative of the cosecant is the negative cosecant cotangent. Then rewrite the inner part. So 4x cubed, you've got to put it in twice. Then times the derivative of what's on the inside, which would give you a 12x squared. So what that is, that's the first times the derivative of the second, and then you've got plus, and we'll scoot things over here a little bit, uh, the original second, so cosecant of 4x cubed, times the derivative of the first, and again I'm going to use brackets on this, so the derivative of the sine is the cosine, rewrite the inner part, times the derivative of what's on the inside, which would be 6x, and u would be done. So there's the second times the derivative of the first. So there's a product rule example. Let's try this one. This is going to be kind of long because you've got <clears throat> several things inside. I'm going to rewrite it like this. y is equal to the sine of 3x squared, the entire thing, Cubed. So first of all, move that 3 to the outside. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one. The cosecant of 4x cubed, the entire thing, to the fourth power. So this is going to become fairly complicated. So let's go ahead and start it. So y prime, now what you've got here, here is a first and here is a second. So it's going to be the product rule. So what I've got is the original first, I'll write it like this, the entire thing cubed. Then times the derivative of the second, and I'm going to go ahead and put that in brackets. Now the derivative of this thing would be, first of all, I've got 4 times something cubed. Then rewrite the original inner part, so the cosecant of 4x cubed then times the derivative of what's on the inside. Well, the derivative of the cosecant is the negative cosecant cotangent. And again, go ahead and write the inner argument, so 4x cubed, and you also have to write it here, 4x cubed. Then times the derivative of what's on the inside so that's going to be 12x squared. And then you can go ahead and put brackets around that. Okay, so that's, at this point, that is the first times the derivative of the second. You're halfway through the problems. Then you've got to put a plus, and I'm going to go ahead and put the second one down. I'll just kind of move it on down here. We will put it right here. So it's going to be this one, plus, and now we'll take the original second, so the original second is, I'll move it up just a hair here, the original second is uh, the cosecant of 4x cubed, the entire thing to the fourth power, so there's the original second right there, so that's the second, then times, I think I'll put it in brackets again, the derivative of the first, but that also involves the chain rule. So when I take that, the derivative of this one is going to be 3 times something squared. Rewrite the original inner part, which would be the sine of 
3x squared, then times the derivative of what's on the inside. So now take the derivative of this. The derivative of the sine is the cosine of 3x squared times the derivative of what's on the inside, which is 6x, and finally, I am done. So there is the derivative of the second. So what you've got there, I'll kind of circle it, here is the derivative of the, fir the first times the derivative of the second using the chain rule, plus the second times the derivative of the first using the chain rule. So fairly long problem there. And finally, let's try one last one. Uh, I think we can just fit this one in. Let's go ahead and think of this. Uh, let's make this be. Uh, again, I'm going to rewrite it like this. y is equal to the cotangent of x squared plus 4x to the 1 half power, and think of that as being in brackets, times the tangent of 3x minus 1. So here's a first times a second. This will be the product rule again. So y prime. It would be the original first times, I think I'll do it in red, the derivative of the second. Well, the derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. Rewrite the original inner argument times the derivative of what's on the inside, which is a 3. So there is the first times the derivative of the second. Now, the original second times the derivative of the first. So that's going to be, uh, we'll scoot this over just a little bit. The derivative of the cotangent is the negative of the cosecant squared. Then rewrite the argument. So I've got x squared plus 4x to the 1 half power. Then times the derivative of this. Now that's also a composite function, so I think I'll switch to brackets. And that's going to be, first of all, 1 half of this thing to the negative 1 half. Rewrite the inner part times the derivative of what's on the inside, and I am done. Then I'll put a final red bracket around this. So the whole thing looks like that. First times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first, but it also involves the chain rule. So I think I'll back off just a little bit, and the whole thing would look like that. So first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. So it's a little bit more complicated examples.